my two best friends were both really into art and one of them, her mum was an art teacher. So I was sort of as a teenager around people who were artists. I remember like a painting by numbers set when I was about 10 or 11. That was, uh, and I remember putting all the colours on the wrong numbers because I just sort of mixed it up a bit. And that's sort of quite an early memory of painting. And then, uh, yeah, I had the friends as a teenager, Ros and Stephanie, and we all went on to art college. Um, yeah, and that was the start of it, really. I went to the Slade and I was doing fine art, I was doing painting again. And I was really, really having a quite a difficult time in my final year, sort of sorting out my paintings, trying to sort of think what to do with them. And um, there was a print room at the Slade, but it was only for postgraduate students. And I used to look inside the print room and go, oh, that just looks fantastic in there. So one day, maybe in the... I think even maybe in the spring term in my final year, I went into the printroom and said, oh, can I do some printmaking? And the head of printmaking was like, yeah, come in, of course you can do some printmaking. Actually, the printmaking tutor, the head of printmaking there, a fantastic man called Bartow de Santos, he sort of helped with my painting more than, at that time, the painting tutors had done because I started to... We started talking about some of the things that we were discovering in the prints and then that was feeding back into my painting and it really helped me sort my painting out as well. So in my final show then at Degree, I showed paintings and prints alongside each other. The very first print I made at the Slade was a copy, in fact two copies of two Picasso etchings and they were the first prints I ever made at, the, uh, at Degree level. And then I actually found that quite a useful way to discover techniques, so I made drawings which weren't exact copies but, uh, but, but became copies of uh, two Picasso etchings. He's always been really big, particularly the, the way in which he sort of changes and alters his prints I really, really like. Um, so Bartow de Santos, the tutor that was at the Slade, he was very instrumental and he was somebody who really works his plates very hard, sort of etching, really heavy bite really long bites in the acid, very dark, very textured, really liked that. And then when I started working in colour, when I was doing my MA in printmaking, I'd started doing lithography and as a painter I wanted to get into using colour. Up to that point I'd only ever printed in black and white. And uh, two really, really important people that I looked at then were Vuillard and Bonnard, two French late uh, 19th century um, artists who they did a lot of um, publicity posters, like Toulouse-Lautrec uh, in that, that period in France. And there were many, many layers of colour in these lithographs. And um, I particularly remember looking at the Braque lithographs and really enjoying the way in which he, he sort of hid one colour with another, but you saw a little bit of the colour coming through. And that was really, really important for me. I really understood that as a painter. And uh, that really got me going as well. Okay, Slaughterhouse um, was set up, we set it up about five years ago, my husband and I, so we moved in to a pretty derelict empty space um, with a lot of printmaking equipment which I'd accumulated over a number of years and we gradually built the studio. We run as a small membership um, studio so members uh, come into the studio to make prints to use the equipment to make prints I run some short courses from the studio it's obviously the place where I work and make my own work and where um, Alex makes work as well and um, it's if you like a place where artists can come together and uh, and hopefully make prints and talk to each other and maybe make connections um, and to that end I've tried and continue to try and sort of take the studio out really so uh, we do exhibitions, we do some uh, demonstrations, we do some work locally in the community uh, and recently we've had an open submission exhibition for artists in the area and um, that was earlier this year um, which was like a really great coming together of artists who live locally to Stockwell where the studio is. As an artist having the the place where you can be and where you can operate and the, where you've got the things around you that you need to operate with are really, really important. And that's what we've set up here, I believe, you know, and, and it's certainly a place where I feel comfortable and where I want to be and therefore where I want to make work. So, um, yeah, for the first time, I suppose, this, uh, certainly for, for a few years since our daughter was born, this has become 
a very comfortable place to be and to work. So that that's how it happens. But it's a sort of it's a juggling act. There's never enough time, and the hardest thing is the um, the broken up nature of the week. So being in one place and doing one thing, being in another place and doing another, and then trying in that to find the place for your work. But I suppose within about the last 10 years, I've tried to find a way of working which allows me to be a bit bitty. And one of the things I do is the work is about like my day-to-day -day experience. So if I have some time, that's what I'm trying to make the work about. And instead of making big grand gestures that are sort of longer term projects, I try and make responses to what's happening at that moment or a combination of that moment and some previous moment. And so that's how I try and make the work relevant, as relevant as I can to the small amounts of time that I find myself with. So I remember driving up Scotland, four of us squeezed in a little car, sleeping bags, food, uh, a bit of wine, and, uh, and sort of just driving up the road to Scotland and, um, and just being really amazed. I'd never been there before, um, at how different a country it was, and just sort of driving up past Loch Lomond through to Oban, um, just, just loving it. Just the, the, the further up we got, the more I enjoyed it and liked it, and the landscape was really inspiring. Um, and so that was the first time we went. And we used to go together, the four of us, sometimes three of us. And then later on, I went there on my own. And then since then, gone back with family and with Alex and with my daughter. And um, a sort of key period was I had the opportunity to have an exhibition. This is quite a long time ago, maybe 18, 19 years ago, um, at quite short notice. And I had previously applied for a residency, which I didn't get, which was on an island in Wales. I didn't get this residence and I thought, hang on a minute, I could go to Scotland and recreate the same thing. So that's what I did. I went to Scotland and the show was called A Month on Ling, which is the place where I go. And uh, I showed paintings and big charcoal drawings that I did in a month. So I made, went there for a month and I made about, I made a lot of work. I made about 80 paintings and about 20 big charcoal drawings in that time. I just worked like mad. And that sort of set the sort of pattern then for how I try and work when I go there. I try and set myself some sort of project. I arrive for however how long. It might be a week, it might be three weeks, it might be a month. And I just try and keep going and I try and keep a focus when I get there. There's a sort of space to think. There's being outside. I mean, I draw from the landscape. I, I like being outside. I like responding immediately to what's in front of me. I like being affected by the weather, by the light. I like the struggle when it rains, when it's windy, when it's cold, when it's hot. And the way in which that makes you draw or paint differently, it just does, you know, you ha might have to balance in a different way on a rock. You might be sitting in a very uncomfortable position. You know, the rain might be affecting what the drawing looks like or the painting looks like, but I really like those traces of the of, of the being outside. And sort of more recently I've even sort of, you know, I might take rubbings and I might incorporate those into the drawings. So it's a sort of real response to the landscape. It's a very interesting landscape in that it's part industrial. It was a slate mining area. Uh, and so you've got this very um, uh, severe landscape to the island behind you. You might be looking out west to this incredibly beautiful sort of west facing uh, island sea landscape and so I love that juxtaposition so I've always found really interesting for example in the city I like the man-made against the natural landscape so the buildings against the sky the skyline against the cloud and so you get the same thing in Scotland but but it's a different the dividing line's still there but what's to either side of that dividing line's different and then the west facing landscape and the if you like, the, the, the eastern facing landscape behind you and looking out west, so this fantastic sense of looking out beyond anything. And then this sort of closed landscape, it's a bit similar to that sort of, it's the man-made and the natural again. So it's, it's a natural landscape, but it's scarred by the, by the man-made elements. I really like that, that you've got this incredibly beautiful place, but the traces of people in it are, are really interesting. They disfigure it and they also make it quite interesting. So I really like the way in which, the way people lay out their lives within the landscape, um, the fences that delineate where they live, the, the washing lines that sort of give me a sort of structure to it, 
the telegraph poles marking out the spaces. Um, so I find those are the things that interest me um, and the juxtapositions of those things, one's, one against the other. And I think coming from the city, so there's a duality to that and then there's a duality to living in London and then going to that very beautiful, very different place so that one informs the other, I think. So I take, I take the city there with me and, and, then, and I bring the, 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 the Scottish landscape back into London with me, hopefully. And they sort of, they sort of balance each other out a bit. For example, last year, the work that I did, in combination with those thoughts around my daily life here, have sort of been the, 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 the inspiration for nearly a year's work since I was in Scotland last. One of the, um, some work that I have done in the last couple of years was around the rock pools, drawings of the rock pools in Scotland, and then coming back to London and looking at the same looking in the same way at the pavement and the, the yard outside the studio and the floor inside the studio as well. So seeing those as the equivalent to those beach uh, rock pools um, uh, and so seeing the similarities and seeing the differences between them. And actually the rubbings become quite important. So I'm quite often using rubbings either in, in the prints or now, more recently, I've just been starting to make some new work where I've actually got little pieces of collage that are coming into the prints and in order to introduce different textures um, and uh, some of the elements of collage are printed and some of the elements of collage are rubbings and some of those rubbings are done with different colours. So I'm trying to confuse, if you like, what are the different things that come into the drawing or into the print in the end. So there might be, there might be some collage elements from some previously made prints. There might be, and they might in themselves be from the rubbings. Um, there might be some rubbings which are on different papers, so they look different. There are some print elements which are the original bits. So if you like, I'm bringing all of those things together. Um, and so that's quite, quite, quite exciting. <laughs> One of the things is, if you're painting outside, it's fantastic because in Scotland nobody cares. Whereas if you're in London painting outside, they all want to see what you're doing. So you can be out in the landscape and nobody, nobody cares that you're there. Nobody's interested. Maybe one person talks to you, but there's not anybody around anyway. So I really like that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna blog from uh, from Scotland again this year, and uh, yeah, I'll just be updating um, updating with the work that I do this year. So I'm doing some planning now to think about what the work will be that I'm going to do there this year, and preparing some things to take with me. Um, so I'm going to start that 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 fairly soon, and sort of just show the sort of preparation for that trip as well. And uh, yeah, I'll try and keep people updated with what's going on. Um, it's actually a really nice thing for me to do because the work is about the day-to-day -day thing so I do record it what I've done by date and by time anyway and so the fact that it's updating and going onto a blog is actually a natural progression actually so it'd be really nice yeah yeah I plan to do that. I'll be showing work in the open studio that we have here in October beyond that I'll have to see what happens yeah. <laughs>